Hello, my name is Jong Ang Wang from the Hammam Church in Chinchan. I was a sushi chef. I believed that I could have a great life if I was an expert with my sushi knife. Then I met the risen Jesus. Now instead of a knife in my hand, I live by the word of God, which is the sword of the Holy Spirit. I want to share my testimony with you. My family was rich because my father earned lots of money. He had a business in the tourist industry. Our family was wealthy and powerful enough for him to be a special advisor to a congressman. But my father was exploited and betrayed in the world of politics. His fall from power ruined my family. My parents ended up divorcing. I have a half-brother who is 10 years older than I am and a mentally disabled sister. As I faced these difficult circumstances, I thought that I should be the one to take care of the family, even though I was the youngest. When I especially saw my sister get bullied for her mental disability, I clenched my fist and vowed to protect my family. I thought I had to be strong in order to take care of my family. First, I thought I had to be physically strong. Then I thought I had to have the guts to never back down from a situation. To look tough, I only wore black. Black shirt, black pants, black everything. And I scowled all the time, like the mafia gangsters you see in the movies. I actually had a pretty tame looking brow. So I taped my eyebrows together and practiced frowning in front of the mirror a lot. <laughs> right after I finished high school, I packed my bags and went up to Seoul. I liked the city because no one recognized me. I rented a room and worked various part-time jobs. At the end of all those experiences, well, I concluded was that I needed to be skilled at something to make a good living. That was how I started down the career track of a sushi chef. You may think that a sushi chef looks pretty fancy with his white gown, his white hat, and his sharp knife. But everything was really, really hard when I first started. I worked over 12 hours on my feet, and since I was a novice, I was treated less than human at times, and I got the barest of minimum wage. All the people I met at work seemed tough and wild. I was just a kid, and it was hard for me to live with these people every day. But I worked my hardest to become the best sushi chef. If there were any leftover fish in the trash, I would take them and practice my knife handling skills. When everyone else was taking a break, I offered to do the work that my bosses were supposed to do for them. This made my skills grow faster and I was able to get ahead just a little faster than others. Gradually, I became more competitive. I wanted to be better than anyone else. One time, I had a bad cut on my finger, but I didn't go to the doctor. I just superglued the wound shut and kept working. I was living in a place far away from home, so I thought that being weak would be the end of me. I listened to gangster music to think tough thoughts. I even got tattoos on my body so that people would think that I was tough. But I didn't want to get a tiger or a dragon tattoo or anything like that, so I got a cross tattoo on my left shoulder and a Bible verse and an angel tattoo on my lower back. Now that I look back, I feel so regretful about getting tattoos, even though they were of the cross and a Bible verse. As I worked like this, I was promoted to manager at a young age I was the second youngest person at the restaurant because of my age. I thought I should look and act even tougher to get people to respect my authority as a manager. So I never smiled. My pay increased, and I managed to save a good deal of money. But I wanted to make more money. So I bought a one-ton truck, decorated it nicely, and began to sell sushi on the street. The business did so well. I was tired from only sleeping three to four hours a day, but I was making three times more money than before. That kept me going. Then one early morning, I got a call from my mother. Through the phone, I could hear her crying, and she said, Save me, son! At the time, my mother was running a restaurant, and one of the customers had assaulted her. I went straight back home after calling the police. However, it turned out that the man who assaulted my mother was a community leader in that area. 
and we were treated unfairly during the investigation. We felt so wronged, but we had no money or anyone to help us. After two months of this, I couldn't take it anymore. I took my mom and my sister and moved us back to my home in Incheon. After the incident, my life started to go downhill. I got into two car accidents and couldn't work for a while. I had to spend a lot of my savings because of that. Then my aunt, whom I had really trusted, scammed us out of a lot of money. All these misfortunes happened in a single year. The fact that I now I had to take care of my mother and sister was a huge burden to me. I felt like I had to become tougher, stronger. But later on, I could hardly breathe from all the heavy burdens of life. My mom probably knew what I was feeling, and she said she didn't want to be a burden to me anymore and said she would go back home. I told her, No, Mom, I'll try harder. But inside, I found myself thinking, Yes, please, Mom, I feel like I'm going to die. After I sent her off with the moving truck, I felt so guilty and sorry that I wept. I felt like my heart was ripping in pieces. Time went by, and I worked like crazy to make money. I became a Scrooge. I hardly ever spent money. I held back on clothes and food as I saved up every penny. I became the highest paid worker at my workplace. Then I got an offer for a partnership from a friend I got to know when I was running my sushi truck. He suggested that we start a sushi restaurant together. The restaurant was going to be in a good area and I was experienced, so I felt confident. I took all my savings and invested in the restaurant. At first, as I expected, the restaurant did very well. I thought, if this keeps up, I can buy a house and get married in two years. I was so excited. Then one day, my partner's friend came to visit our restaurant. Then he suddenly talked to me about Jesus. Actually, I had attended church sometimes during my military service because an officer had evangelized to me. I was not a passionate believer, but from some point on, I began to get a heart for God. So I read the Bible from time to time. I wanted to know more about God. So I decided to attend this friend's small church meeting. Then I learned from the gospel booklets provided by the church. Now that I look back, the testimonies I wrote as I learned from the booklets were a great help to my faith. Then I became astonished by an amazing fact. Jesus was human. There was a proof. Jesus' death and resurrection was part of the history of Israel. Then this world really is darkness. All of these things I found out for the first time completely won my heart over. I started to watch the testimonies of the members of the Hamam Church and the pastor's sermons on YouTube. Then at some point, I became a big fan of Hamam Church. Meanwhile, my restaurant wasn't doing so well anymore. Then it hit rock bottom. Eventually, I had to close down. But I was actually glad because I was really burnt out. After two months of watching testimonies from Hamam Church, I finally got to visit the church. It was a Saturday praise worship service, and it was more passionate than I had imagined it would be. Every church member was praying passionately. There didn't seem to be a single half-hearted person. I loved listening to the words of the pastor and the testimonies of the church members. After the service, I had fellowship with some church members. While I was talking with them, I came to clearly understand the preachings about the resurrection. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. I found myself saying, Amen to all these words. Jesus had given up his heavenly throne and come down to this earth as a man to suffer all that he did, endured such humiliation and risen from the dead for us to save me. How surprised the Israelites must have been when they confirmed through the resurrection that Jesus was God. 
This almighty God whom they knew and feared through their historical records had died before their very eyes. And when he was raised, their confession was, What shall we do? What are we going to do? This was the cry of those who had realized the gravity of their sin. Their sin which had killed the almighty God. When the resurrection became clear to me, it also became clear to me that Jesus was God, and I saw exactly how great a sin it was to still live as my own Lord, not believing in him who died instead of us for our sins and rose again. When you hit a dog while you're driving, your heart pounds from the shock of it. But we had killed Jesus, who is God. Then how heavy that sin must be, and how high the price! I could not help but repent immediately. God, I didn't know. I thought all I had to do was do my best to live the life I was given. I didn't know that Jesus, God himself, had come and gone from this earth so that he could be my Lord. I'm so sorry. I don't want to live without Jesus anymore. I don't want to live however I want anymore. Please be my Lord. After I heard the gospel of the resurrection and realized how futile life as my own Lord had been, I never wanted to live as my own Lord again. And as I kept listening to God's word, I fell flat on my face when I realized God's love. Before I knew Jesus, even before God created this world, he had first made the tabernacle in heaven. But there was no sin in heaven. He had made it in advance in case we sinned, because he was ready to die for us. What people saw with their own eyes was the resurrection of Jesus. But God had prepared to send his only son to this earth for thousands of years so that he can die and be raised again for a sinner like me. Before God sent Jesus here, he had many people prophesy about it. And he had these prophecies recorded in the Bible. And in order to save someone like me, he had sensitively managed history for thousands of years as he made his plans. Then Jesus had to come to this earth as a man, as promised. His resurrection had revealed to the world this work of salvation that God prepared for thousands of years because people couldn't believe unless they saw, unless they confirmed for themselves. So God, God had planned and prepared this way. How could I not surrender before his amazing love? How can I not repent when I have known his love? How could I ignore and trample upon this enormous heart and love, being stubborn and insisting that I'll live as my own Lord till the end? It was so amazing. After that, I stayed in the church and spent time with the brothers. We ate, prayed, and preached the gospel together. I was overflowing with happiness that I had never felt before when I had strived to live only for my family and success. Then one day, as I was living joyfully like this, one of the church leaders talked about the eternal kingdom to me. He said that in chapter 21 of the book of Revelations, it talked about the place where we would end up, heaven. I have not read the whole Bible, and I hadn't read any of Revelation yet. He showed me chapter 20 and 21 and told me, This is where we're going. When Jesus comes down to the earth again, our bodies would change into a risen form like Jesus's, and we would live forever. What's he talking about? Our bodies change. <laughs> I listened with great interest. It was written that when we go to the eternal kingdom, where we'll live with the Lord, there will be a road paved with gold, a river of life, and a kingdom filled with jewels. When I listened to this, I was so excited that I couldn't contain myself. As we talked about heaven, we felt so much hope and joy that we couldn't stop laughing. And Jim Elliot's words became mine as well. He's no fool, 
who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. I was so excited that I went to the park and shared the gospel with the elderly people who were there. I didn't know how to share the gospel, so I stammered a bit. However, no matter how well I did it, it didn't matter, because God just loves that I shared the gospel. Plus, when I thought about how, in this way, I stored up rewards in heaven, it didn't matter whether I stammered or not. I had not ever taken a break ever since I started working. I felt guilty and anxious if I wasn't working to make money as a young man. But I spent weeks without working and making money while I spent time with the church community to be trained for my faith, and I didn't feel anxious at all. Though I wasn't making money, I felt that having fellowship with my church members and preaching the gospel with them were much more valuable ways to spend time. While I was spending time like this, I realized that all the things that had oppressed me were gone. I don't have to worry about my family because the Lord would take responsibility for them. All I have to do is share the gospel whenever I can and pray earnestly and sincerely. Amen. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Amen. At some point, these words had been engraved into my heart. People say that, at my age, I have to make money and prepare for my future. I know that my remaining 10 years as a chef should be the best time of my career. However, no matter what job I may have, I came to hope that my youth would be spent wisely and received by the Lord. I worked hard to survive in this tough world and sharpened my skills as a sushi chef for success. However, my dream is now to sharpen my skills with the Word, the sword of the Holy Spirit, so that the Lord could use me to His heart's content. I will always remember the amazing love and grace of God and by His love sharpen the sword of the Word all the more. I will live not as a chef of this world, but as a soldier of God. Thank you.